Let's finish up this mixed media heart with color and by adding a couple of visitors. Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. When we left off yesterday, we had finished seeing the adding of texture and dimension to the heart, followed by the laying down of the base color. Now my goal is to give that base an aged, somewhat grungy look. For this, I'm using two darker colors now, Honey Brown and Burnt Umber. With a very slightly damp rag, just as just a little piece of towel, I'm rubbing in the lighter Honey Brown from the middle out. I just put a drop on the towel and I'm just rubbing it in. I decided that I wanted the periphery to be darker, so I'll use the darker color for the edges. The goal here is to get some color down on the surface, but rub it back off of the high spots. In other words, all the modeling paste raised areas should get wiped clean of this new color. My hope was that the paint would get forced into the crannies <laughs> and the nooks and hopefully make the texture pop. To be honest, this was an idea that sort of logically worked in my head, so I was just kind of hoping it would work in the real world. And I got lucky. It did. So now, emboldened <laughs> by the success of the first color, now it was time to try and blend in the darker color with as soft a transition between the two colors as possible. I started by blending in some burnt umber into the honey brown and then rubbing that mixture in. And then after doing some of that, I went full umber for the total periphery. And woohoo, I like it. I think it turned out pretty cool. Next, let's give the stones some color. For this, I'm going to use Marabou's alcohol ink in the color cinnamon. Wait, what? Alcohol ink on acrylic paint? Yep. It works pretty nicely. And I particularly like Marabou for this because their colors are lighter and less staining. I added a couple of drops to one of my little silicone cups and with a small, short bristled paintbrush, I started to add color to my stones. I chose alcohol inks for a couple of reasons. I love the translucency of the color it dries pretty much immediately, and on acrylic paint, I can layer the color as needed. So when you add more on top of it, it doesn't bloom, it just gets darker. Every now and then, I added a little red to the cinnamon or a teeny amount of black just for some variety to keep the stones from being all the same exact color because that wouldn't happen in the real world. The thing to know about painting with alcohol ink on acrylic is not to work an area too much while the ink is still wet. Let the ink dry if you want to make adjustments. It only takes a few seconds to dry anyway. If you fiddle too much with it while it's wet, the ink will soften the acrylic paint and blend into it. Now, you may want that, but I didn't in this case, so I would let a stone dry before touching it up or adding more color to it. If you feel a color is too dark, you can brush some of it off with some plain isopropyl alcohol. You'll see me do that later. Now for the vine. And guess what? More alcohol ink. I chose agave and olive green. With a very fine round brush, or a liner will work well too, 
I'm painting in my stems. Now, if you have alcohol markers, it's even easier to do them with those. Just choose whatever tools and whatever shades of green work best for you. Of course, you can use acrylic paint for all of this, but honestly, I think you'll love the effect of the alcohol ink. If you use a more intense ink like pinata, I suggest thinning it down with alcohol or blending solution so that it doesn't go down too dark. You can always build up the color as needed by adding layers of it. For the leaves now, I've switched back to my angular brush. I start out with a light coat for the full leaf and then to give them some shading and less of a flat look, I double up on the ink on part of each leaf, the side that I think would be in the shade. Now let me show you a super fun and quick way to add that dimensional quality. For this, you'll need a darker green marker or a liner brush or a thin brush with a darker green ink. What I'm doing is drawing on the edge of the leaf that would be shaded. I'll do that to all the leaves at once. Next, I'll go back to my lighter marabou ink and I'll start to paint in each leaf. As I paint, I blend the darker edge into the lighter ink and I'm aiming for a soft transition. This is so much fun to do and it gives the painting a really lovely watercolor-like look, I think. What do you think? Tell me in the comments if you like this look. If necessary, you can go in and add more dark to your edge if you've blended it in too much, or you can lighten the other side of the leaf with plain alcohol if the overall leaf got too dark. If you make a boo-boo <laughs> at any point, just dab at it with a little alcohol on your brush. So before calling this part done, I'm doing a little cleanup of any ink over spills. And with that, I'd say it's done. But wait, how about we add a little shimmer and extra life to this? I've got these awesome dragonfly chipboard pieces in two sizes, and I think a couple could make a nice addition. They need a little color though. Again, regular paint is a fine option, but part of my commitment to you is to introduce you to products you may not know about or show you other ways to use products you do have. For this, I'm using Nouveau Embellishment Mousse. It's a metallic paste that has shimmer and dimension. It blends beautifully and it dries quickly. You can spread it on straight from the jar or add a little water to it in a palette, for example, to make more of a paint. I want the wings of the dragonfly to shimmer and reflect the light, so I'm blending a little patch of cornflower blue and platinum. Again, just to keep the wings from being a uniform solid color. Now for the bodies. I'm cutting some post-it notes and I've left three sheets stuck together for added thickness and I'm using that to mask off the wings. I'm going to take advantage of the mousse's dimensional quality now. It can be a bit crumbly, so working it a bit gets it to be soft and creamy, like um, lipstick. And once I get it to be nice and soft, I spread it on the bodies. Next, with a bamboo skewer, I'm going to carve lines into the paste to give it the look of segments on the bodies of the dragonflies. 
it seemed the right thing to do to give them a sense of dimension, given that the background has so much dimension. And here they are, all done. But wait, there is more. <laughs> we have been using marabou inks. And for those of you familiar with them, you know a little something extra these could get. Yup, rainbow ink. I'm just dropping some on each of the wings. Look at that sizzle. <laughs> oh, I love it. Now, because that bodies are higher, because I added that raised texture, the rainbow ink stops when it hits the edge of the bodies. And now I think they're done. <laughs> Let's give these guys a home. Since the surface that I'll be gluing them down to isn't flat, I'm using ultra thick gel medium. It's more of a paste, so it'll fill in any of the gaps between the dragonfly's body and the sort of bumpy surface it's being adhered to. As always, I hope you found this video fun and useful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and share your thoughts in the comments. Remember that links for everything I used are in the description box. I thank you for your kindness of checking out those links because it really helps me continue to make videos. As does using the other options you'll find in the description box of ways to help my channel. Let me know how you think this turned out. I love hearing from you. May your creative nature shine. See you soon. Bye now.